Hello, everybody. I guess it's time for this dash, and I want to tell you that this is uh, the first uh, batch. I'll put up another one in probably about a week. But it's not only about uh, these stashes. If you go uh, in my uh, uh, store, you'll see that there's another section there that is named clearance. And um, you will see there in the description, that's where I'm going to sell everything that I made during tutorials or experimenting stuff, but it doesn't really represent my style if you want and that one you'll find it in the regular jewelry section and in the wearable art so without further ado let's go ahead and uh, start presenting you the distaches uh the distache number one i don't know if you remember this uh tutorial it's been quite a while since i did it let me see if it's better if I turn on all the lights. If you can see better this way. I'm trying to get these lamps all the way in. Okay, so uh, this was a tutorial I did last year, I think in June or July. Goodness, this Microsoft is driving me nuts. I don't want to sink. Um, anyway, when I was teaching you the um, apple peel effect, and uh, I promised we'll do more organic, and we will do. You know, my main enemy is time. Um, the, the set itself uh, is varnished, and uh, it's made with these black beads are actually bone. Yes, it's dyed bone. All, all the black beads that you see with all kinds of little carving on them. Uh, they are bone and then the other ones are wood. So this is one of them. And then there's a whole bunch of uh, cabochons and other things. So a uh, full rhodochrosite. One of my... Um, this is not a... Peter side for Peter side Peter side it's part of my uh, experiments and I told you usually right before I get to the final stage uh, those cabochons are by themselves very beautiful uh, even if they don't look exactly like that specific gemstone and then a full Larimar cabochon let me see perfectly there we go I want to have a very, very good uh, focusing. Then another one of the pre Peter uh cabochons. And you can see that it already has all that beautiful chatoyancy. At this stage, I already had it. And another one. I know that everybody wanted my four Peter sites or even the ones before. And then a uh, faux malachite, a faux coral, Tibetan coral. And then I made these. The idea was that I was going to make earrings, but I'm sure that I'll never get around to do it. They kind of look like jade, but they do have these metallic and normally in jade you do not find metallic inclusions unless it's a very ancient piece and it has been buried with pieces of metal like in the the tombs of warriors or something and then some bronze might have migrated in the jade but um, these pieces are nicely sanded and as you can see they are perfectly buffed only that as i said I, sometimes i start stuff and i never get around to to finish it and then you know that i have the thing about making beads <laughs> and i love making beads okay let me get uh, to us so, hi teresa hi judy hi sarah hi anna hi Jeanette. hi rosie and thank you 
I have, Jeanette, if you look, if you search, generally speaking, whenever you need to know something, uh, most of the time, if you would do a search on YouTube and you put the Akaliana and then whatever you're searching for, most than likely you'll get it because I have now 400. Um, but there is one that's called sanding and buffing on a dime that I made especially to show people that you don't need to spend a fortune on sanders and on buffers and on that. You can actually do a very good job without spending a whole bunch of money. Actually, these ones, um, I didn't set up the new sanding thing, but these ones I sanded by hand and they are buffed with my little uh, flex shaft. And uh, you can find those um, uh, little buffing wheels uh, that I had found on eBay. Uh, Trish from Polyclay Play managed to bring them. So you don't have to wait for six weeks to two months to get them. And she has them with wonderful prices. I mean, they are unbeatable and they are fine wool compared to uh, the muslin that most of the little uh, buffing wheels have and they do a much better job than the muslin. Okay, then a big um, bolo tie bead with another one that's kind of matching. Here I was making some butterfly wing canes and uh, the ends were just so beautiful that I had to make beads out of them. And this is another bead, if you remember the... Um, um, Oh, what was it? Uh, the Cherokee style um, calf that I made that looked like fabric and leather. This is made with the, some slices that I had cut extra from that cane. Okay. And um, all these are... Oh, shoot. No, I, I forgot to put the link. Did I put the link in the description? Let me see. Because I saw that I had put the link in the description thank you yes i did so uh the link to the store is in the description and as you go there you just go to these stashes and you should be able to find all of them okay number two let me make sure that i'm showing you okay number two if you remember this I also made it last year uh, sometime I don't know also July August something like that it was the Spanish dancer and I showed you how to make this kind of uh, like ruffled skirts thing and it has a, this is velvet I know most of these usually are leather but this one is actually velvet and then this is a brooch that I made during uh, one of the sponsor lives. And it was a step by step on how to make a brooch. And this was supposed to look like a vintage one. And it's all buffed with the, uh, it's uh, metallicized with Prima Marketing uh, a vintage gold. And then on top of it, white gold. And then as I had some extra from, uh, if you remember, the uh, cabinet knobs, pools, I had some extra and this would make a beautiful pendant. And everything that I'm showing you, unless I specifically say it, um, everything is sanded and buffed, has no varnish, so it can be uh, rebaked. Only if I say this is varnished, then it is varnished. But if I don't say anything, that means that it's just sanded and buffed. Okay, and then as cabochons go, oops, sorry. This is uh, the last before final for the dendritic agate. It still looks like some kind of agate. Oh my holding it properly and it is translucent it's got translucency 
Here is actually a car for condor agate. And it was funny, Teresa told me that one time she was at a rock fair and uh, the lady there had condor agates and because of this she recognized them <laughs> because of my tutorial. Another one of the pre four Peter sites, Cabochons. Then uh, an aquamarine, a four aquamarine, and yes, it is translucent. It is pardo. Let me see if you can see the translucency. Uh, maybe, maybe. Okay, now you should be able to see the translucency. And, oh yeah, I forgot. Then this, this is also can be a pendant or whatever you want to make it. It's just with the, this is done just with my basic flower canes, the ones for beginners. And it was also done during uh, one of the sponsor lives as I was showing how you can use slices of those. But you can find all of these in the, um, whatchamacallit, in my, uh, if you go in my playlists, uh, you will see that there are uh, canes for beginners. Then another butterfly wing, uh, bolo tie, oh, not bolo, bolo bead. <laughs> I am something else. And then uh, except for these three, which one is uh, kind of agate, and these two are just crazy Mokumegane veneers. All the other beads in this, um, this stash package are flowers. And you can see they are actual Mille Fiori. This one is made with um, uh, leftovers from the carnation cane. These are made with little uh, cherry blossoms. This one too. This one you see it's with these. So you can actually make a pendant with a bead on top or on the bottom, how you want to, to put it. And these are actual, the real deal uh, Mille Fiori beads. Because, you know, Mille Fiori means a thousand flowers. And they are really, see how, can you see how tiny they are? I got them really, really, really tiny. As you know, my specialty is micro caning. Okay. So this would be number two. And after I'm finishing to present you the distash, I'll show you a few, even if I didn't upload all of them, um, but I'll show you some of the clearance items. Okay, let me see which is number three. Number three. Okay. Number three has this. Uh, if you remember, this was a tutorial of uh, clay inlay in clay. It does need a bale. It doesn't have a bale. Uh, if you want, and if you tell me, I can uh, poke some holes here if you want to put big jump rings to hold it like this. But otherwise, you'd have to place one of those bales like this, like this one. See, like this one, you'd have to make one. Uh, this I made, oh gosh, uh, when I did the one of my very first videos last year when I started the channel was with uh, a bargello from all kinds of colorful uh, cane scraps. And this is made with remnants of that, with the four pearl, and uh, it, this one is varnished. This one is varnished. And it's on a leather uh, cord. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Connor is sleeping somewhere. Um, okay, then uh, these two, I tried one time a specific color combination and special cut on a mokumegane 
and uh, these are just they aren't even cabochons they are like thin things so you can easily make uh, earrings out of them but you can see that they are really really beautiful and the uh, shuttle oh connor heard me so he's here what really oh my goodness yes he's here yes my gorgeous boy i know okay this was because uh, i had made three when i made them um and two of them got already sold with previous stashes. that's another pair that you just need to put the the ear wires to them they are pretty much like four agate in a uh four copper um setting oh connor He's poking at me. Let me try and get this to hit down a little bit. I know. You want to say hello to people? Hmm? Yes? Hold on. I shall get him. Come here. Come here if you want to say hello to people. Yes. Let me make sure that you're in the camera of you and we'll say hello to people yes, yes there you go you can say hello to people yes 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 mm. say hello to people hmm? you wanna say hello to people here's the camera gonna look here's your camera there yes Okay, you can go. Mm -hmm. so we are done. We said hello to people. We are good. Okay. So, these... <laughs> I know, he's something else, isn't he? Let me make sure that I'm good on my... Why does it look so dark? No. Oh. And still better with this. And then, as cabochons go, another precursor to uh, this one is actually to the landscape agate. Another precursor to the four Peter site. And you can see it already has all that chatoyancy thing. A uh, full malachite cabochon with some chatoyancy in it. And then uh, on here I was working on some jaspers. And uh, other things. So these are pretty much fantasy cabochons. They are not really looking like anything real. And then another for aquamarine. Oops. This is another one of my experiments on something, but as you can see, it looks really beautiful. And it's got chatoyancy and all that. Then here, these are also some of my experiments. I'm trying to um, uh, be able to reproduce the same effect over and over um, in the Natasha beads technique and I was able to and uh, you'll see that throughout the, the other distaches there will be a few of these pendants and they actually look what I wanted to, to obtain was the look of um, pretty much painted china if you want so this is one of them and then there's a full set of glass effect beads that they have um my caning cane slices and micro cane slices on so there's two pretty big four six eight of them so they are kind of tiered but uh, they ha they look like they are made out of glass. Another camera doesn't really show it very well. And here's a corner here. 
but they have a lot of um, super fine uh, caning inside. And I've set the camera to focus at about this level, so even if I try to come closer, it will not autofocus. Because I got tired of begging the ca camera to do this and to do that, you know. So, this is the number three, right? Okay, now let me check. What's the next one? Number four, okay. In the number four, as main piece would be one of the um, uh, wolf head um, bracelets, it needs findings. And it's multicolored because I wanted to make it look like so much earth. But it's with the wolf cane. And, uh, and then a pendant that's with all kinds of gamma colors with caning and um, other kinds of stuff that I've been working on. Another one of my experiments. You can see it's got Chateauyancy, it's got all kinds of pretty stuff. A4 Rhodochrosite. One of the little Druze, four Druzy hearts. And yes, this can be everything that I showed him. Uh, uh, everything in this one is um, sanded and buffed. So it's not uh, varnished. It can be rebaked. Uh, and then another pendant. This one is made with my ripple cane. And you cannot really see it from far. You have to be very close to see all the ripples. But... The very tiny ripples it has in it give a special effect when you look at it. Another little precursor to the Four Peter site. And then, I don't know if you remember, but last winter I wanted to... It was a challenge if I could reduce... I had some scraps and they were like two millimeters thick. And I was supposed to check if I can work with that and actually make something. So I made this um, poinsettia uh, cabochon that would be great in a pendant. Then there's a pyramidal tetrahedron bead that's got stripes and some colors. Uh, and this one is doesn't have a hole, so if you don't know how to make holes and you buy this, tell me and I will put a hole through this. And then this one also has a set of matching beads with quite tropically colors. And they are not all uh, identical. But they would make a very... Uh, nice um, necklace or be part of different pieces if you want. And yes, this, this is all with uh, caning. Okay, so this was number four. Let's move on to number five. Check number five. All right. This is number five. Number five's main piece is this. This is a pendant that I'm not entirely sure if you can will be able to see it on camera, but it has some 3D effect. It's supposed to be uh, the beach, 
and uh, in some areas you can actually see like if it was a wave and translucent and it's got a bail and I made the back look like sand when you know when the seawater gets back and then the the salt when it dries on the sand hi Chris and it it looks like salt on the sand pretty much then uh, this is another one of my experiments that I just you know didn't get around this is with the full Larimar and a little hummingbird and some flowers with a little rhinestone and all that and this was made with an actual leaf from my leather leaf in the back and then this does not have a bale and the backing you would have but uh, this is made with my uh, butterfly effect mokumegane and hopefully I'll be able to put a tutorial in the store soon because this was one of the sponsored tutorials from last year. But it would need the backing and the bail. It was just too pretty, you know, to throw it away. And then another uh, pendant cabochon. And this is actually, this has, it's very hard to see on the camera but it has tiny 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 shapes and things inside it's not black it's got stuff in there oh i'm glad i'm glad that you were able to make it and then as cabochons uh this is not an aquamarine i tried to do something more agate-ish so it's something in between an aqua, aquamarine and an agate if you want of course it is translucent like all the other ones this is another four peter side precursor and you can see it's got all that chatoyancy stuff in it and another four peter side precursor but they are, uh, these ones are almost as good as the final one. So they can easily be used in, uh, in making jewelry. Then a smaller foam malachite cabochon. And uh, one of my faux opal experiments, just a white opal. If I'm not mistaken, this was made with the Lumiere uh, flakes. I don't know if you can see it. Let me check on the other screen if you can see the, the fire on it. It's kind of hard. But you can see it's got the milky blue of the regular fire opals. And then there's a bolo tie bead, again with the butterfly wing motif. And then some art beads, two bolo ties. And these ones actually have a um, carving, have a 3D effect on them. And, of course, they are sanded and buffed, and they come with four round beads, just in case you want to, you know, with the same cane. Two bigger and two smaller, just in case you want to put, you know, like one above, one below, or something like that. So, this was number five, right, I think. No, if you don't mind, give me just one minute because I need to go take a pill. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Sorry for that. I am back. Let me check which is the next one. The next one is number six. Number six. So for number six, and these are a little bit older. They are from the beginning of last year. Uh, this is varnished, and it's a pendant. I was trying here, I think it was one of RGD's tutorials, that I was trying to change something on it, to do it differently. Anyway, but uh, yeah, it is a pendant with a bail with all the finishing. And I wanted to make it look like, pretty much like a galet of sorts. Anyway, and this is a little, it's fairly simple, but it looks like a vintage thing, and it's uh, with sari type ribbon, or the fake pearl type thing, and the uh, end caps are pretty much uh, clay, they are not metal. And then another one of the um, slices I had cut extra from um, cabinet knob thing. So I made it into something that can be made into a um, pendant. This is another one of those experiments. And on this one, you can see much better um, what I'm, this is closer. This is the final thing. Uh, when I told you that I was trying to, I mean, trying to Number one, repeat the effect type and make it look like uh, painted china, you know, like Victorian type painted china. And if if you don't look very close, this gives you the illusion that it's one of those uh, tiny roses painted china type, but it would make a beautiful, beautiful pendant. And then... Let's go for uh, four rhodochrosite. Another one of the four Peter side precursors. And another one. And this is me working on a different four gemstone, but as you can see, as I said, even my experiments sometimes come so come out so prettily that uh, I don't feel like throwing them away because they are just gorgeous. And this is a four chatoyant malachite. Uh, this is one of my paid tutorials. And you can see the chatoyancy throughout it. This is also me experimenting with another four gemstone, but as you can see, it's all. Uh, this is kind of a Natasha bead for Unikite. <laughs> if that makes any sense. But yeah, I uh, I was playing with the for Unikite, Mukite stuff, you know, I'm, I've been experimenting with Jaspers. And at one point I just made a Natasha bead and it just came up pretty. So there you go. Uh, then a four agate teardrop bead. And then a few, two, Two, three doodle beads, black and white doodle beads. And then actually, they are doodle canes. They are not doodled. Uh, then a four Petoski stone bead. I don't know if it's not too, the design is not too tiny for you to see it properly. I hope you can see it properly. And then uh, 
few Celtic cane beads in black and white, and two are teardropped. And two are not. And they also look like uh, glass. And they have a small uh, area with the Celtic knot frame, and then larger Celtic knot uh, suggestions on top. So this was number six. I'm moving through. Okay, number seven is... Okay. So this is number seven. Remember this? Now, if you have a... Uh, any of your switch plates is with one, then you can use this. Remember, if you remember the tutorial. Uh, then, it's got this pretty four turquoise and coral Native American style uh, snake pendant. The snake has a very strong symbology in the Native American um, jewelry. And this is also, I've been trying to get to it. I want to, to start a series that uh, the idea is that these are supposed to kind of look like teepees. If you see these, the, the bottom is where the mica shift, and then there are these kind of canes that look something in between boulders and flowers. And then this is supposed to be the prairie with the stormy sky. But uh, yeah, the, all they need is the ear wires. Hopefully I'll get around and do these sets that I've been planning on. Then another one of those uh, Natasha pendants. As I said, I was trying to be able to keep repeating. Uh, and then, and this is a power inlay. It's supposed to be power inlay in um, ebony. It doesn't have a hole. It has a thing to put a screw or you can go through or put a screw. And, and then we have another one of the precursor to the landscape agates. And yes, it does have transparency. A precursor to the four Peter sides. And then two little four rhodochrosides. A for uh, abalone, two for abalone, sorry. And uh, these are not, they don't have a hole. So if you need a hole pierced and you purchase this one, let me know and how you want the hole pierced. I usually put it through here. And then another one of those experiments I did. You can see it's all Chateauyancy and stuff. Another four Peter site precursor. Another four and malachite. Actually, this is a precursor. It's not the final. But you can see it still has a lot of chatoyancy. Then an oval bead. Two cylindrical beads that look like they are made out of air bubbles. 
corals, however you want to, to call them. And then two biconic beads. Everybody done nobody says anything anymore or did I do I need to scroll down? No. It's okay, I guess nobody chats. Huh. I just saw that there's no more feed on the chat. Okay. Now, number eight, right? Yes, number eight. Number eight, if you remember the live when I did these earrings, and where with the whole rainbow thing and with copper like inset. And thereby the latest fashion and stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, then actually another one of those uh, painted China Natasha beads. Why did I stop my? I don't know why I stopped my thing. And another one of the pendants with all kind of designs. And this is a super, 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 super fine micro cane. And when I say super fine, I mean super fine. And then uh, Chateauian Malachite, four Chateauian Malachite. Yeah, none of these stones are. Good afternoon, Zenta. None of these stones are real, and I don't present them as real. Another for aquamarine. And then this package has a ton of beads. Okay, so we got... No, there's one more cabochon. It's a, a little... All kinds of chatoyancies one. That's a fantasy one. So, first there are some... Pearlescent y brownish, copperish ones, and you can see that one is really tiny, but it is still nicely sanded and buffed. And then some colorful cube beads that are made with all kinds of mokumeganes and stuff. Actually, no, these are made with. Painting. I painted and then I ripped and I I'll show you one day what I did. This these are Mokumegane. And then okay, let me not take them out. There are two rounds like this with this kind of cane in them. Then there's this one that matches these two. And these were made with a very organic -y cane that I made. Super organic -y cane. And then all these are matched. And you can see there's uh, some micro caning on them and regular size cane. This one is pretty much a teardrop, then a bicone, and the rest are all. Um, around now the number nine is a more unusual not the way that i did my distashes until now number nine and number ten are the more unusual stuff that is i have started something but it looks like i'm never able to get around to finish it uh, this is a set that i made with uh, 
um, butterfly cane slices but it's got like several layers and in between the layers um, there's mica and there's let me see if I'm focusing properly so you can see some of this beauty there's mica there's gold leaf and all kinds of effects of all kinds of colors and the same on the uh, necklace and it looks like it's got metal overlays I forgot how these are called but anyway and the back is nice it even has my all they need is the fastenings and somehow I get the fastening for them and then for some reason I use it on something else and then I find this again and I'm like oh goodness I use the stuff for this on something else and then I order it again and then you know so it's like obviously somebody else is supposed to finish it not me you know so this is a de-stash by itself. And then another important de-stash. is a set of five bracelets. So for people who go to vended venues, that would be really good. Now, these, if you remember when I did the whole review on the American body art, uh, mica powders, I made these. I never got around to put the fastenings on the ends. One is uh, shorter, it's more for a wrist like mine. See? And one is longer for somebody with a more solid wrist or for somebody with a thin arm if they want to wear one on their wrist and one on their uh, upper forearm but as I said these need fastenings then if you remember this because I made it in a tutorial last year one of my first tutorials then this one was also a tutorial if I'm not mistaken and this one does have fastenings has a magnetic clasp And then this is something that I played sometime last year. I was playing with Lisa Pavelka's um, uh, texture sheet that's got a lot of steampunky stuff to see if I can actually make um, gears and stuff. And it's got, it's made with all kinds of things, with mica powders, with metallic waxes, with acrylics, but it's and it doesn't need fastenings because it's almost full full bangle, full around bangle. But it is sealed. You don't have to worry about the, the mica coming off or anything. So this is the tenth uh, distash. And you'll see it's a little bit more expensive than the other ones. Not by much. Now, on the... <laughs> clearance things on the clearance things you'll see that there are several sets of earrings i didn't upload them yet but you will find them in the clearance section like for example and again, this would be wonderful for people who go to vended fairs. And if you're asking, why are you selling this so cheap? Because I'm running out of room. That's why. Because I didn't get around to start my store earlier. And now I got too much stuff. And I don't want to have to deal with it on a daily basis. It's too much for me. So this is the second, and if you remember these, because I had a tutorial on these as well, 
the little flute earrings. Uh, then you'll see that there are a few other pieces that are from the tutorials. And uh, including this one, this one will be on clearance as well. And some other pieces. So hopefully I'll be able to fill up the store sometime soon, hopefully. I hope. And uh, bonjour, Lilou. Hi, Sherry. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah, this one is going to be appearance. This was another clay inlay in clay. If you remember, and it was a little set of a pendant and earrings and all kinds of uh, little things like this they will be all on clearance i'm not going to leave uh, to put full price it will be a limited number of pieces let's put it this way i mean i'll put on full price only the pieces that i think that truly represent my style of jewelry and my style of art but uh, you will uh, find more beads and more cabochons. Uh, as I said, a lot of people have asked me to uh, sell the, the cabochons. Here's another set of earrings. Uh, of my four gemstone cabochons and even the fantasy ones. So you will find them in the... Um, in the cabochon section. And as I said, a lot of beads and stuff. But you'll find these as sets and very well priced. So if you vend at fairs, you'll have something ready made that you only need to display and sell. So uh, remember that I said that now that it's in the store, you don't. We don't have to go around and mess up. With let me wait and let me see if I, if you need to send me more money or if I need to return you. No, this time it calculates the the shipping cost by weight without a problem. So we won't have any issue in that. I still only uh, take PayPal, but um, normally PayPal should allow you to pay with your uh, credit or debit card without having to open an account with PayPal. So, and I'm sorry, but uh, number one, I cannot afford to pay the, um, the fee for the card processing gateways because those are way beyond my means. And uh, number two, I love the PayPal protection. I've been with PayPal for years and years and years and years, not long after they actually came up on the market. And they've never let me down. So, uh, yeah, it will be still with the whole PayPal protection and, and stuff. And... As I said, I will be uploading more and more uh, things. So keep checking periodically. And as I said, hopefully towards the middle of the week, I'll uh, present the second part of the D-Stash. And by then I should have more of the clearance stuff because uh, what takes me a long time is the taking photos and then making the photos web-worthy you know, because they have to be a specific size, a specific uh, contrast and brightness and all that to make sure that people from all kinds of devices are able to, to see them properly and all that. So, thank you for being here with me and I hope you like the distaches and um, I'll see you later. Yes, I did not forget, we'll finish that little dragon, but not today, and I'm not sure if we're going to finish tomorrow either, because I'm all busy. I really, really, really want to finish uh, rearranging my workroom, and until all these are nicely labeled and nicely uploaded in the 
in the store so I can put them with their little piece of paper with their inventory number and all that. I cannot really clean everything because I need room to be able to put everything together, you know, and note it and register it and inventory it and all that. So thank you so much for being with me here and I'll see you soon when we'll finish the little dragon. Okay. And have a wonderful week and happy claims.